spawning down in the bottom right. It is the blue Protoss player, America's Hope. Give it up for M. Canning. And up in the top left-hand side of the map, we have the red Zerg player. He is Eggs. He's going to be representing Platinum Esports. Platinum Esports, a pretty cool org. They are an organization that kind of sprung up as a result of the World Team League, allowing you to uh, send a second team. <clears throat> now, they, they are technically a different team from Platinum Heroes, but they are... It's kind of like uh, on, or well, now I guess Talon. <clears throat> is it? No, not Talon. What is the team that offside or onside gaming became? Didn't they become like off onside? Or, oh, there's, I know what you're talking about for the world team. Like, you know, I, I'm so bad at remembering the names on these. So, so there's offside is the team, the, the new yeah. one. Um, by the way, we've got M Canning faking a cannon rush, and Egg sent his Overlord a little bit too far forward. Didn't have it actually covering the back. M Canning will cannon rush you. He is yeah. one of the players that will still do it, and he's real good at it too. Uh, so he does force Eggs to pull a drone. It might not seem like much, but uh, it it shows that at least at least M Canning. I, I guarantee you, he's got the, just the tiniest little smirk on his face, like ha, got him. <laughs> just oh, just the littlest smirk. I actually, I will say, if we're talking about skill sets and things amongst players, one of my favorite things about M Canning, and it's, I think, something that makes him really fun to watch. And this is, I think, one of the reasons he was very successful as a streamer. But as a player, he's also a lot of fun to root for because I think if I had to say his two strongest points are, one is, of course, I have to just say Disruptors. His Disruptor control is just really, really fun and really solid, which also always makes him really fun. But I think second, I would say his game sense and his ability to kind of just do small little plays like that to get in his opponent's head to read the state of the game is oftentimes very, very good. I think it's what allows him a lot of the time to get small little edges or to allow himself to find opportunities to come back in games a lot of the time. So I love seeing that side of Uncanning, even when I know he hasn't been playing quite as much as maybe he was a couple of years ago, he still has not lost that edge. No, and it's it's this instinct, it's this this mentality that you have that can be such a powerful weapon. <clears throat> uh, and it's really cool to see. Eggs, mm -hmm. for his part, is going to be doing something a little bit dark-esque, which is... Uh, we'll, we'll see what he does with these lings, but he sends the, the first two lings across the map with the intent of being able to get a scout in the main base, maybe get a little bit of damage done with those first two lings. Oh, M. Canning is going to be able to find the nice. creep tumor. That's... I, I can tell you, on on the list of things that Zerg players hate, I mean, it was Widowmines before the patch. <laughs> and getting your first creep tumor sniped, it's it may not be like set two or three, but it's it's on the top five for sure. Uh, it definitely seems infuriating to have your creep, especially that creep tumor. Yeah. Where it's right as you're trying to exit your base. You're just trying to make it out of the map. You have no creep really on the map. Your third base seals so far away. It's going to be very, very annoying to deal with that. But uh, we do also have a Void Ray first, as we uh, kind of got a glimpse of that. And y'all mm. showing us that Void Ray first. And this is always a funny one to me. I, I think M. Canning, from just vague like streams and stuff I've sometimes seen of him, he may have a different opinion on this than what I've heard a lot of other Protoss players say about it. But when I think about Void Ray first, I think yeah, either, yeah, you're going to go into a Fleet Beacon or you're just really, really trying to play it safe against something. And it seems like it is going to be that Fleet Beacon. Honestly, playing it safe is not a bad move either against Egg specifically. Yeah. And and we do have this Baneling Nest. It looks like it's actually defensive in nature, which is kind of strange. Eggs is going to come in here. Might have been able to get a cancel on the Nexus, but instead just settles for the probe. And I, I think it probably would have been a waste to go for that Nexus, because even if you get it, it's like, it just started. You're probably going to lose all your lings. So I actually like the decision to get the, the small thing, especially since he forced that Oracle's Pulsar beam, up, beam to be used. But I wonder if Eggs is going to think something is up right now because that Nexus was late. It was about 40 seconds later than we'd normally see. And that always, that has to mean some kind of tech, whether it's aggressive tech right away or it's something like, you know, two Stargate Carrier or in this case, two Stargate Tempest. Yeah, this is going to get really, really funky. Pylon snipe with a Bane Link. 
I mean, I guess if you made six Banelings, you might as well use them on something, but... Yeah, I just, I don't know if that was necessarily going to be worth it, but at least it does supply block Ag Mechanic. It actually does delay the next Tempest, which is surprisingly nice. He's very, yeah. very supply blocked right now. So, and, and it Tempest means, also revealed. Hmm. It means you, oh, wow. That's actually huge that the Tempest is revealed like that. Um, that was, oh, I think that's actually a big mistake to, to show it right there. Um, because now there's going to be so much time to, to respond to this. Uh, M Canning is going for just three Tempests? That, okay, okay, I was gonna say, no, he just didn't have the money for the, the fourth one. No, it's gonna be five Tempests. It's gonna be five Tempests, that's gonna be enough to one-shot Queens, and of course, I heard that audible gas, the tectonic destabilizers, the anti-building damage is just yoked. It is jacked on Tempests. It is really, really fun to go for. Now, it is going to be fun to see how M Canning decides to like make his journey across the map because he is on a very small set of units right now. It's basically just the two adepts, a stalker, and a sentry back at home to deal with all these little lings and bailing run bys. We even have more bailings being made. X has been so aggressive with his early game units. And oh, oh. I will say, okay, that is oh. a relatively effective run by. I'm not going to lie, but I was going to say before that, I wasn't actually getting too much done. This is some nice counter damage from M. Canning, siphoning off a couple of probes or drones himself. But yeah, it's almost like weird because M. Canning invested so much in these early Tempests. He kind of needs them at home to even help defend against these constant Ling run bys until finally now, I think he might have enough. This is super confusing right now because we just saw Eggs build a Spire very quickly, but he started a Hydralisk Den. I wonder if he's thinking, I don't have time for the Spire right away, so I need Hydras, but Hydras are so bad against Tempests. If Tempests can just sit in a pocket, sit in like a, a high ground space, there's that first queen getting sniped. This hatchery is going to die so bloody fast. It does take five Tempest shots to one-shot a Queen, but it's not really going to matter because the Queens don't really want to take on that fight. No. Three Corruptors on the way because, like you said, so much gas and everything else is just dumped into the Hydras. There isn't really actually that many resources available for Corruptors. And I don't know. This this gets really weird because there's even a couple of Void Rays out. There might actually be almost as many Void Rays as there are Corruptors. Yeah, I got to be honest. I do not like this response from Eggs one bit. I, I think that this... Hydras are just not the answer against Tempests. Like, if, if the Tempest player screws up a lot, and look at this, ah, oh, this is funny. We're gonna see a recall because he thinks that when you see one Corruptor, you're gonna see like eight to 10. And that's actually a very valid response, a very valid read. But in this case, because like you said, so much gas was put into those Hydras, there actually wasn't enough Corruptors to fight the Tempest there. That's a, that's a funny scenario. Regardless, I don't hate the recall. Uh, mm -hmm. M Canning, though, is going to be very well set up for this. We do have an attack trying to come into the natural. Nice warp in. Blocks the lings. Eggs has lost a lot more than M Canning. And he is kind of setting up to be very committed with this attack. Oh, yeah. He is absolutely going to be. <laughs> Nick, the scouting Nexus is going to <laughs> identify the position of the army. Does get a cancel off on that. Doesn't end up losing everything to, I don't know, like the Hydras of the Banelings blowing up on it or something like that. Unfortunate, but Disruptors are on the way right now, Steadfast. I mentioned this before the series started. I mentioned two things. One was that M Canning is known for his Disruptor control, but two, I also said, as this game goes on, I am going to just kind of favor M Canning a bit more in terms of stylistic strengths. And I feel like we're getting more and more into that comfort zone for M Canning. Oh, we absolutely are. He is he is thriving right now. He's got that plus one ship weapons done, charge plus one weapons on the ground going to be done, so the Lings are going to have a difficult time. Eggs is really going to be committed. M Canning has not been able to secure a fourth base just yet, but his tech and his army power feel so much stronger long term. Oh, that's very nice, actually, for Eggs. Baneling's able to get a good bunch of connections, killing the Nexus, no cancel. Mm -hmm. That's actually a really nice start. Uh, Eggs, as long as he doesn't commit into a defensive M Canning on three bases, it's actually not the worst thing in the world. But as I say, that Disruptor shot uh, gets a couple of Hydras. Another one not actually controlled ideally. We are going to see that hmm. dive in on top of these Void Rays. The Void Rays, well, I think they can just shred the Corruptors. Has Battery Overcharge already been used? 
Uh, yes, it looks like it. The Hydras yeah, are going to be doing pretty well here. Probes pulling into the fight, but as the Zealots get on top of those uh, Hydras, this will be a hold for M. Canning. Lings are still shredding the probes. Ah, oh, man, this is such a weird fight. This is not how I expected it to go one bit. Uh, I the... think Eggs is going to be happier with it, though. I mean, oh, he's, he's going to be so happy. The structures on, the, on the reinforcements. I really am I'm surprised that M. Canning, he had the disruptor shot going over all of the banelings, and I guess maybe yeah. he thought that the banelings would pull back if he tried to go after them. But I actually think he just wins that fight if he uses the disruptors on the banelings. I think the Hydras alone would not have actually been able to set, uh, stand the test of everything. No. And the Disruptors could have actually retreated back, but the Banelings actually killed so much of the front line. Y you know what the ironic thing is? You were talking about the strength of M. Canning's Disruptor Control as a highlight. Yeah. And you're right. Historically, that's always been the case. Oh, Banelings going to come in from both sides. And Archon gets surrounded. Zealots, they're doing pretty well until the Banelings show up. But Eggs gets another 17 probes. And he is just continuing to trade. Even with all this going the way that it has, the supplies are still so close. But it's just that M. Canning's economy is, is so far behind now, like absolutely terrible relative to that of his opponent. Mm. But to continue the point I was making, it was the disruptor control, the lack of it, that actually cost him that fight. The first disruptor shot kind of fell short, didn't didn't mm -hmm. hit. Uh, it could have hit maybe four or five hydras instead of the two it hit. And then it was that second one that whiffed on the banelings that allowed eggs to just blast that fight. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you on that. I I have to say, in this situation, Steadfast, my gut almost tells me M. Cannon should just go for it. Like, I actually don't think his army will be any stronger than right now relative to Eggs. Yeah. Eggs is, he's made a handful of these characters, but eight Corruptors versus four Void Rays, a Carrier, five Tempest, and a Mothership. I, I actually don't know that Eggs wins that. And I feel like M. Canning's best shot is maybe just to try and steamroll through and actually just kill things, win a big fight, and then kill reinforcements off. I, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be the safest play, but... I don't know if that's his best shot right now. I think No, I think you're 100%. I think you hit the nail on the head. That is absolutely the best chance. Now, recognizing that is super difficult in a situation like this, because when you're barely holding on, it feels so counterintuitive to go for a counterattack. But with plus two ship weapons on those Void Rays, on those Tempest, on those Carriers, well, I say Carriers, it's literally one. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the amount of eco damage that he took... I think he's just underestimating how committed Eggs was and how close the armies actually were for a while after that. And even now, if we look... Well, okay, the army value actually... No, the army value is actually still very close. And even now, yeah. the the army supplies are not that far apart. Ah. I'm worried it might be a little bit too late now, and Eggs has just been sitting on five bases. M. Canning, remember, he was trying to take a fourth base four or five minutes ago or something yeah. when the banelings were killing off the fourth base he has been unable to establish it there's a ling slash baneling run by over here which i think may be able to bust in just because the banelings are also going to be added in dps oh this is a very nice pickoff here for m cannon killing off all of those banelings so maybe he can mount some kind of defense but now he's dealing with lings and his natural his fourth base is going to be under siege he's losing tempest to the corruptors i mean these are all okay enough trades that Eggs is fine with them. Oh, yes, they absolutely are. Um, and, and I feel like we've been focusing so much on M. Canning, on what he can do in this game, but Eggs has done a great job of keeping the aggression up and really really keeping M. Canning on at the back foot kind of, kind of in totality. Yes, he's been a little bit over-aggressive in my opinion, but... It, he, he's put M. Canning under so much stress that M. Canning has struggled to kind of uh, know what the game state was at all time. And Caustic Spray is going to come in. will clear out this Nexus. But that does mean that the Corruptors are not here when M. Canning is going for this push. Did Eggs... No, he didn't lose his fire. He's building another one for some reason. He's also banking a little bit of money. But as I say, that starts a lot of Hydras. Disruptor once again whiffs. The Cloaking Field will come online. There is a spore crawler here to provide detection. Ah, corruptors are gonna come home. This is still such a scary army to deal with. I'm so glad that you pointed out the detection there, because there's no overseers right now. I'm 
I'm genuinely worried about this. Mothership just finally get picked off over there. Storms are coming out on top of those Corruptors. The Voiders are going to oh. eventually start winning that fight. Are the Hydras actually enough to clean everything up? It looks like it. It does seem like Eggs is able to hold on over there. And M Canning, he lost all of his key core supply. He does still have Zealots around. He's still trying to do some harassment and stuff. And I don't know, like if he had been able to kill off one more base or kill off a bunch more workers, I'd maybe feel a little bit better about his chances. But is just having the three base set up, because he did keep his fourth alive, is that actually going to be enough for him? I mean, I want to say no, and like I, I do say no, but I, it feels like M Canning has been fighting a guy. He, he's been fighting two guys right now with one arm for like the last seven <laughs> minutes and he's still somehow on his feet. Now, I think that is going to likely come to an end, but if we get a good defensive fight right here, things could change. Now, with Ling's into the natural and the main, it will be quite a nu nuisance to deal with. But there's actually not enough Hydras to fight the Void Rays. Those Void Rays do have speed, and they are going to chase down a lot of those Hydras. Hydras are not cheap, even off of a 68 drone economy. Yeah, I mean, the army supply for eggs still isn't exactly massively high, Six Voiders really is look, quite a bit. And he is finally going to be able now. to clean up these lings in the main base at long last and still has to clean some out in the natural. A couple of the warp gates are depowered as well, but it's not exactly like there's a warp prism offensively warping in. But the problem is M Canning did have to pull back. He didn't have enough of an army to actually steamroll through and take out a base. And that means that Eggs is still going to be sitting on this killer economy on basically, what is that, six bases? Even if not all of them are mining right now, M Canning is still barely on this free base economy. Yeah, and, and basically every trade that is even is so good for eggs right now. Now, M Canning is not letting him end the game, but as the Nexus in the natural got like knocked down, even though there wasn't a lot of resources there, now M Canning is on one leg and one arm. You know, like he is continuing mm -hmm. to just get hobbled over and over again while eggs is comfortably mining off of six bases and a 30 worker lead. Like if you look at the income advantage over the uh, last, you know, like seven minutes of this game, it has just been all Zerg. Eggs, I think the big final piece that he was missing against what his opponent has is those ultras. Because now it's gonna mean that High Templar, like, like you can basically run like four ultras into the army, clear out the High Templar, and then the Hydras kill everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as those High Templars are not able to get off Magnificent Storms on the Hydras, Eggs' army should be able to steamroll through. Oh, a parasitic bombs a parasitic on top bomb. of the Voiders as well. A big recall as well. <laughs> that is going to leave the Parasitic Bombs behind, I believe. Oh no, it actually, it recalls the Parasitic Bombs Yeah, too. recalls, yeah, yeah. But you get to the oh. Shield Battery and then Battery Overcharge heals through it. Yeah. Um, th that, would, that would actually be such an interesting thing if it left the Parasitic Bomb at home. Well, when Vikings land, it leaves the Parasitic yes. Bomb where they it, are. If Battle Cruisers teleport out, I think it also used to leave the Parasitic Bomb there. Oh. I don't I think could, so, but I'm not actually 100% on that one. I'll have to I, double check I, I, you're my 99% right about about the Vikings. back notes like at <laughs> some point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. 99% useless should, I should know this, but yeah, it's been a while since I looked at it. Um, I, I did always love the interaction of Vikings cleansing Parasitic Bomb by simply just not being in the air anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, um, when you Phoenix lift a Baneling, if it dies in the air, the splash damage still goes through on the ground. Yep, only on the ground. And we do have a lot of Banelings on the ground. Going to be storming on through. Ultra's also here. The army was over by the top right-hand side. M Canning is not going to be here in time to actually save the Nexus. Can he at least punish the army? Can he at least find some kind of value from this? It doesn't look like it. The High Templars just a little bit too slow to actually get a whole lot done and nice split off over there on the void ray i templars though oh they're getting chased by the ultra steadfast Ugh. yeah this is this has just yeah. been the longest death animation uh and granted it wasn't a death animation this whole time m canning's been behind for a lot of this game but he hasn't been dead for all of it but for the last like maybe three or four minutes he's been he's been pretty pretty dead on his feet yeah it was kind of crazy to watch because m canning really was making eggs work for it but at the end of the day eggs only had to work a little bit for that just because he was so far ahead at that point so nice job by eggs of course i was 
crediting M Canning a lot and just being able to win things out in the late game situation that did go to a inarguably late game situation. And I'm kind of with something that you said earlier. I do wonder if you put that in the hands of like us, you know, just so that it's like not insulting this, uh, how I say this, like if Cyril or someone was controlling that and you're just a little bit less aggressive, could you just still win there without having to like be as stressed about it? Because it did feel like Eggs was actually sacrificing and attacking in a lot more units and losing a lot more there. But that's, I mean, I know that that's also like theoretically maybe what some top European Zerg player or something would say about that game. But at the same time, I just appreciate that that's kind of what Eggs does. This is just the way Eggs plays. This is his style. This is his comfort zone. Sometimes maybe he's not always getting the most cost efficient trades, but it is stressful to play against that kind of style. It is really, really tough. And you saw that earlier when we were talking about that moment. M Canning looked like maybe his best shot was to just go counterattack across the map. And you pointed this out steadfast. Like attacking when you're just constantly getting battered down is really tough it is it reminds me of like if you're in an actual physical fight you know what's the saying everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face <laughs> yeah when someone's yep. punching you in the face it's actually really hard to find that kind of courage and muster something up to attack back a yeah. lot of the time people just kind of turtle up and that's almost what it felt like m canning had to do in that situation and that's i think one of the most powerful things eggs always has going for him about his play style i actually really love that that's kind of the way he went about it yeah, no, it felt like, um, it felt like, uh, to use a, a Dungeons and Dragons term, because yes, we are all, <laughs> not all of us, but I'm a big geek and I'm a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons. It felt like a monk, just constantly flurry of blows, just exactly what you're saying with these unending attacks that, that gave no quarter, no space, no opportunity to ever really breathe. And that kind of started from like, minute five like he he blew up that first pylon at the third it it kind of dislodged m canning's build unintentionally he was not planning to supply a block and prevent the the third and fourth tempest from hitting the field that wasn't the game plan he was literally like okay i'm just gonna see if i can you know depower this you won't be able to warp in there maybe i can kill the base obviously the oracle energy was managed well the void ray was in good position everything kept that from happening but there were so many like unintended consequences and that just really knocked M Canning back on his heels. And it's cool to see that exactly what you described really happened We're in the right game. there. We're in the game. Jump into the game, Dave. There's stuff happening. All right. Spawning. We'll do a quick intro. Spawning up at the top left. It is M Canning with a cannon rush. Down here on the bottom right hand side of the map, the Red Zerg player. He is Eggs getting cannon rushed. Ah, uh, Dave, I live for this. Oh, the Overlord's going to scout this. But I want to note that even if you scout this, this pylon positioning, this is my favorite type of cannon rush because it's the kind where even if there was a 12 pool or something, your pylon and your gateway and everything is far back enough that you can actually still just get up this yep. cannon. There is a drone. Uh, you know, this is kind of a weird drone pull because it's, no, it's five not good. drones. Yeah, it you can't really deny the the actual cannon over here you're not really going to deny a whole lot but you're losing a lot of mining time from this it's so much mining time that you're losing and it really undercuts the ability to defend we are going to see eggs getting a second gas on the main base he will be going roaches for the defense but the drone pull it feels like it achieved nothing right there it feels yeah. like all it did was just make this defense for eggs 10 times harder the literally the only thing the drones did was it forced the probes to play like a merry-go-round yeah. around a little bit of the map? And it was like, cool, I've scouted that you have, in fact, not also proxied a Nexus and you don't have a <laughs> fleet beacon up or something. Like, I, I truly, I think that that was a bit of a misplay there. And we're going to see the impact of that because M Canning, he wasn't exactly like, I, I would say that this is maybe like one extra cannon than a lot of the time yeah. some players will have at this stage. But he is already just on his normal pathway here. Nothing is really looking all that different from what a normal player would. Oh, oh my, my god! He did god. actually take the next. Is he? He's he. He wants it for the shield battery overcharge, doesn't he? That's gotta be it. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> oh my, wait, are there what? Okay, there's links crossing the map. Do we have a cannon started up just yet? Not you yet. You can start but up it, pretty late because yeah. the pylon as a part of the wall in. Yeah. Uh, does allow you like a lot of extra hit points, so you can you can wait a little bit before you throw that up. 
the thing is, because Eggs is able to sit on his natural expansion for so long, even though the drone pull was not amazing, he is responding to this very well. There's no tech yet for M Canning. There's no robotics facility. It's going to be stalkers on the, I guess, aggressive play. Um, oh, can that forge? That's actually going to be really close. He might get in. No, he is going to get in. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, it no, really no, annoying. no, no, no. Yeah, it's definitely going to be very annoying. He should be able to kill off one more Ling. Yeah. And then the other two Lings are going to be able to get through. And M Cannon can't build any more Photon Cannon. Yes. I don't think he really wants to anyways. But this is just, it's so interesting. It's one gateway oh. worth of pressure. One Ling just went down. Um, yeah, this mm. is really weak pressure, relatively speaking. And already with five Ravagers, you're able to one tap a Cannon with Corrosive Vials. Even, well, actually, technically with a Shield Battery, it'll get like one or two Shields worth of healing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is really rough for M. Kenny. He is going to rebuild that forge now. He's going to lose a probe as well. And with only four stalkers here, eggs, he forces out the battery overcharge. There is not a lot of defense here. I think, I think eggs is going to smash this. I, I think he's got this in the bag, to be honest. Mm, yeah, it's definitely going to be really tough because the shield battery overcharge, this is literally what M. Canning was banking on with all of yeah. this. Is the fact that he could use shield battery overcharge with the Nexus there. It's the reason why he didn't have two gateways instead of one. He could have had almost twice the number of stalkers otherwise. He could have had a Robo, could have had a Stargator, so many other things. But he said, no, I really, really want the ability to feel better overcharged with this Nexus and also probably eventually be able to mine over there a little bit. But yeah, oh. he hasn't been able to find any real value from it so far. I will say, M Canning has not lost the stalker yet. That is also a very important thing. And he has been getting some pickoffs. Yeah, the problem is it's just his production is so slow right now. We're going to see Eggs diving yeah. in on top of this. He could go after pylons here. Target fire on the Ravagers is good, but there's Battery just so charge. many more Ravagers. Available. Oh, he loses the cannon. Yeah, that's going to really sting. He does have another forge that was rebuilt. He has a field shield battery overcharge available. He has shield battery overcharge uh, battery that's not getting target fire down. But that's nice. Yeah, he's just... He's just not trading out well enough, it feels like. There's still enough Ravagers around that you can continue to bile down some of these buildings. Ooh. That's a nice pickoff yeah. there. Three, three Ravagers actually is a little bit light to yeah. batter or to shield, uh, cross the bile down these Oh, buildings. he gets another one. Mm. M. Cannon okay. is actually doing such a good job right Cancel. now of taking down those Ravagers. They're so key. Yeah. Shield batteries are running very low in energy now, but another one is about to finish up. Shield battery overcharge is not going to be available for a little bit longer. So M Cannon has got to make do with very, oh very God. low energy on these shield batteries. If he gets another Ravager right here, like the Ravager mm -hmm. count is so key to cleaning this up and he hasn't been able to get the shutdown. Something we haven't mentioned as well, that's a direct result of the Nexus. Every shield battery is starting with 100 energy as opposed mm -hmm. to the 50 energy it normally gets. This has been a gigantic difference in terms of the calculus of how much you need to actually break this. Another Ravager getting targeted down. I am going to recant my statement. I think M Canning has done this just about. It is still so close and still so up in the air. Battery overcharge will get popped. Oh. Doesn't keep the Stalker alive, but he doesn't lose the shield battery either. Yeah, so unfortunate. It's actually, it's a little bit of RNG. If a, if a shield battery that's not overcharged is healing a unit, or decides to heal a unit oh, yes. before the overcharge battery does, then the overcharge battery doesn't actually heal the unit at all. <laughs> like, yeah. So I think he ended up losing a stalker to a little bit of that RNG there, but he is still doing a fantastic job. If he manages to snipe this hatchery, that gets really interesting too, because M Canning actually has a little bit of mining going as well now. He's eventually going to start out econing eggs. Yeah, and Eggs doesn't have enough Ravagers. This is a really bad fight for him here. He's going to lose so many lings and only takes down one cannon. And yes, we've got Ling Speed completing, but look at the supplies. At one point, it was 25 army supply to six. Now it's mm -hmm. only an eight army supply advantage with a huge defender's advantage for M Canning. Weird to say defender's advantage at your opponent's third, but that is the case. Man, I don't know what to think about these Lings running across the map. I guess, remember, Eggs did see that he had knocked down the forge earlier. He didn't know that a forge was rebuilt over there in that exact same location. So I get it, but that is also going to be painful because he was actually losing some time that he's trying to do a big fight over here. He's trying to break through and he doesn't have a bunch of his lings. He's able to maybe slow down a little bit of things, but that's enough stalkers right now. Dave, I think he's going to get the hatchery in the next volley or two. Yeah, this is this is becoming an inevitability at this point. There is so much static defense point. here for M Canning. 
Oh my god. Get Dark Shrine. Oh my god. Let's I'm go. Panning. My man. Waving his American Protoss flag wildly in the wind. Hair's just sweeping back. He's got, you know, his Pab's blue ribbon. Oh man, this is a beautiful game from M Canning. Yeah, that Ravager count is getting built up a little bit. I'm gonna say it's not a hundred percent over just yet, but it's looking pretty bad for Eggs right now. He's gonna try and break through a little bit. That is enough to kill that cannon. And there really aren't that many cannons left over, so if he could actually deal with the stalkers and push things back, maybe get have some chance. But what's he really falling back to? It's like we said before, M Canning's actually getting up additional attack. He's not even just reliant on the stalkers anymore. And that is the biggest concern to me right now. If M Canning had no additional tech behind this, I would maybe say Eggs is in a bad spot, but maybe he can make some miracle happen by breaking through with all the cannons gone. But that that Dark Shrine is getting so close to finishing now. The one thing I will say, with only one gateway this whole time, the production is That's really true. rough. Stalkers are going to get caught a little bit here. Yeah. All the lanes are down, though. Oh, this is actually... Oh, my God. This is still so weird. Now, I, if you warps in a DT, there it is. Spore yeah. is coming on in, but it is going to be a powerful DT. Where is the Spore? He can actually just click the hatchery. Just click down the hatchery, yeah. Oh, and this, this is exactly what a, I mean. Imagine, a, imagine that there wasn't a Dark Shrine there. Then M Canning was actually losing a surprising amount of ground. There's a very real chance he'd lost a bunch of probes there as well. He's going to be recalling probes. But ag again, he has lost most of his shield batteries over here. This actually looks a little bit dangerous. But the DT changes all of the map. It makes everything so much more okay. It certainly does. Every single Ravager goes down, and that will be the end of this one here. The DT even getting saved, getting back to the battery <laughs> overcharge. This game, in a nutshell, single G comes out. That is frustration, if ever there was... Oh my god, what a fun game that was from Mr. M. Canning. You know, I, I know that M. Canning is a man that does like listening to the broadcasts and stuff, and I feel like maybe, I'm obviously joking, he didn't actually do this because of me, but I feel like he was listening to me saying, you know, I think of the two players, Eggs is going to be the one that brings some fun, aggressive builds or something, and he was like, I, and, that, and I took that personally, <laughs> he was <laughs> like, no, let's go for the cannon rush. Let's go for a cannon rush with a proxy nexus. I mean, that is truly just so NA. I absolutely love it. And uh, we're not even done with the series. It's just tied up one to one now. No. And uh, they are they are fighting tooth and nail. I really do feel like Eggs had a moment where there was like five Ravagers on the field. Uh, I think mm -hmm. one cannon left. All the shield batteries were empty, and there was no battery overcharge. If his bile usage was perfect right there, I think he breaks the position, and the game is just straight up over. Like, it's... Because if you break that position, if the cannon mm -hmm. rush gets stopped, it's two base to one. It is no production for M. Canning. He's got a cybernetics core at home. Sure, he can rebuild tech in theory. You can build a Stargate, you can get a Void Ray, you can hold. It doesn't really matter. The Zerg can then drone up with absolute reckless abandon get up to a third base even before you're taking your natural like the game is over in yeah. all intents and purposes at this level so the fact that m canning was able to hold that position by the skin of his teeth i really do feel like more so than anything was eggs miss just missing a little bit on that but the fact that m canning was able to turn that around that feels like a turning point in the series just oh, absolutely completely no, I, I really do think when you do those kind of builds where it is just Stalker versus Roach Ravager and there's like some shield batteries behind it, but regardless of whether there's a Nexus with shield battery overcharge or not, it really just does come down a bit to can you out micro your opponent? And I do feel like M canning kind of out micro eggs there. That, that is Absolutely. the reason why that worked. Yep, 100%. Uh, the target fire on the Ravagers was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, he recognized that those were the most dangerous things and, you know, when when I said Eggs had it, it was 25 army supply to six. There was one gateway. It was like battery overcharge on cooldown. I cannot overstate how difficult of a situation that was from M Canning, but he was able to get it done. But let's see if this man in the top right for Platinum Esports can turn it around, can stay focused. It's Eggs. And down here on the bottom left-hand side of the map, we have the man, the myth, the legend. He is the Can Man himself. M Canning in the blue. 
Not going for a forge this game. Man, I got so excited that last game, Dave, because not <laughs> only did I see the forge last game, I saw a forge that was not on the low ground. Yes. It wasn't just like, I'm going to do a light cannon pressure. Pl I'm like, this is a main base forge. This is a true proper cannon rush. And I absolutely, I love to see it. And kind of leads us into a fun place where we go into game number two or three. And we've had some really, really strange variety of games so far already. Yeah, this is uh, this has been. You, you talk about like the European mantra. I think you were mentioning like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, Sarah played that out, blah blah blah. This would be a game that, if this were on, you know, like a Hearthstone game show or something, and you asked uh, every every player in GM if this was a European or an NA game, every single one would say this is an NA series. Like this is this yeah. is as NA as it gets. Um, yeah, this this has been such a fun series so far, and I'm I'm really I'm really enjoying it because both players are are giving it their all. But I, I want to go back a little bit to the mental state of eggs right now because mm -hmm. a game like that. So anyone who plays StarCraft II, anyone who ladders, knows that the game is frustrating. It is frustrating to play, but there are some things that are more frustrating than others. You know, when you lose to. Uh, a player who, you know, like they, they really out control you, whatever, like it's like a 35 minute macro game and you know, you, you get some hits in, they get some hits in, they narrowly edge you out, you know, you played well, you're like, okay, but when it's a cannon rush and you know, you've got a hold on it and it just slips through your fingers, that is one of the most difficult things to recover from mentally. It I is... can hear it in your voice, Dave, because I've seen your ladder streams. And yeah. I know, I know that I know there is a little bit of personal feelings. In oh, this there one. is. This is this is where my this is where I'm able to contribute the most as a commentator. Is is the that true feeling in your gut where you're like, Gah. I'm yeah. not gonna be creative right now. <laughs> If you ever if you ever want to get banned from steadfast stream, I think that is the most likely time that you can try to get banned. So. Uh, if anyone's interested, I know that's something that I'm enjoyer <laughs> of, is uh, getting banned from your streams. But I do want to actually mention that Eggs is actually putting on some pretty decent link pressure over here. He's trying to circumvent his links around to avoid the adept. He's looking to potentially, I think, try and get like a cancel or something on like a third base or something along those lines. But M Canny hasn't actually moved out for a fast third. He went for the Stargate. This is actually a really really ineffective opening i feel like for eggs right now yeah and he built like two extra overlords during this as well which is kind of strange like just a miscue like right now he's at 56 of 82 supply which may not sound that bad but that is an inefficiency in the build it, it does make me think that yes he is a little bit affected by that previous game um now this is the same setup as game number one where it's an Oracle, a Void Ray, and an Adept there. And this time, Eggs does commit in. He will get the cancel on the Nexus, but he's going to lose all but one Ling uh, to cancel a Nexus that wasn't very far along. So it's not like there's that much opportunity cost lost. I don't know. This is interesting to see the, the patience wearing thin for Eggs there, because that was the... Mm -hmm. That was like a very different mindset than he had in game one. Yeah, it's it kind of reminds me of like when you're backed into a corner. Sometimes it's like you, your true colors or like your true self shows a little bit more. Where it's like I know Eggs is a very aggressive player, so maybe when he feels like he's backed more into a corner, he's gonna just do even more aggressive sort of plays mm -hmm. that are a little bit riskier. I don't know if I'm over reading into that. I may be doing like over psychosomatic like analysis like i'm a redditor or something right now but <laughs> i think it is kind of interesting to know that eggs is going to be in a rougher spot he already had a kind of rough opening he committed super hard for that uh kill on the nexus and that kind of feels like it put him even further behind now because now yeah he has been able to drain up a little bit but he has to be able to deal with say two adepts moving across the map and putting on a little bit of pressure and making sure he doesn't lose drones that way or the oracle moving around like there are other uses for those links as well yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I actually do think Eggs is still in a very good position right here. And he, mm -hmm. he, like, getting the cancel is nice. It's just a very different approach than what he took in game number one. Um, and it, it did throw away a lot of lanes, but he's droned super hard behind it. Uh, it's, 
I, I think more so than anything, it does lead into him kind of falling into his own comfort zone a little bit, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because playing to your strengths, like, it, it's funny. I, I was thinking of it as a negative, but like I'm looking at his macro, I'm looking at what he's setting up for. And I mean, Hydraling Bane is a very aggressive comp that can do very well. MCAN is going to be playing Blink Stalker, plus one Blink Stalker is like a much more standard opener than we saw in game number one. Or game number two, obviously. It didn't go to a macro mm -hmm. game, but yeah. It's, uh, I, I kind of like, I kind of like where Eggs has kind of been pushed to, if that's a, if that's a weird way to say, kind of piggybacking off your point. Yeah. No, I, I think I'm with you in the sense that I don't really mind it because M Canning didn't really get aggressive, right? There was no, like, my force four gateways have finished up and I'm putting on a little bit of pressure with, say, like, the Stalkers super early on or I'm warping in some Adepts and putting on pressure play or something there. There's no, like, Warp Prism that came out really fast and he was being annoying or anything. There's, like, there's no early pressure that came out. It Even the two Adepts that he made, he didn't actually move them across the map. So I do think in that regard, Eggs really didn't end up needing the Lings anyways. So things really did kind of work out in that sense. Yeah. Uh, we are going to see Eggs getting Supply Blocked at 120, but fortunately, he's already at a decent drone count. And it looks counter like supply it's... Counter Supply Blocked. Sorry? Oh, you killed oh, the pylon. Yeah. He Counter Supply Blocked Mcanny. Oh, and actually, Mcanny is not building any pylons right now. This is actually a brutal block. Way worse than the one Eggs got hit with. He still hasn't started a pylon. Cannons don't require supply, <laughs> Dave. Uh, I am actually very scared. This timing is going to hit like a damn truck, by the way. Does he, he has... Oh, no, he doesn't have Bane Speed. Oh, oh no, he's getting Bane Speed. What am I... What am I saying? Absolutely missing the missing the plot. But the Hydra Speed, Hydra Range is already done. It's going to be plus two melee, plus one missile, fully upgraded Hydra's Bane Speed. And this is a big army supply for Ooh. eggs. M Canning needs Storm, and he needs it now. Yeah, you know what's unfortunate? The, that's the pylon block there, or the supply block you were talking about? He only now alleviates it. And I think he wanted to warp in High Templars, start building up energy about 15, 20 seconds ago. I actually think when Storm finishes, he may not have the energy for it. Yeah. And this timing for Eggs is hitting right now. Uh, he knocked down those rocks between the gold, the little debris. Uh, Stasis Ward not going to get what it needs to. Banelings. Oh, that's Ooh. a good Stasis Ward in the natural. But there is no static defense done just yet. Storm is completed. But I think we're just going to see the fourth base go down basically for free. And behind this, Infestation Pit already on the way. Ling's actually getting into the natural storm. Oh, he hasn't been able to cast a storm yet. Loses the Observer. And this is just looking so brutal right now for M. Canning. Yeah, the Baneling run by does finally mostly get cleaned up on that top side. And somehow M. Canning, I mean, he loses the fourth base for sure. He is in a bad, bad spot, but he is still technically alive and he finally should have some storm energy available on at least one of the high templar there is a beautiful storm but is uh, that even enough matter. the immortals are getting surrounded as so much of his army was just picked off between the natural and the third yeah i think you hit the nail on the head with that supply block oh we even see an artosis pylon getting picked off there eggs is just going to crush this one in game number three